push the button. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna redo this. The Romper Room Brigade is sending all, all kinds of nasty messages and blah, blah, blah. Well, Romper Room, until you can come up with something like this, your opinion's worthless. It's driving you nuts, isn't it? Because without this, worthless. If you're not in a Faraday cage, double worthless. What it was about is I did a video about part of this topic. I'm going to do another long extended topic on DB in the future. But this one is over inline attenuators. And what it was, they were crying about is the way I had the camera, it didn't show this perfectly. And so they, they had a legitimate gripe. <laughs> you know, the camera was just off a little bit, kind of like that. And so, anyways. Try to get this back in here again. It's not easy to get everything in here and not shake around. We're not going to do any transmitting, but as you've been sitting, you've been listening to that tone, right? I've been hearing it. All right. Yeah, kind of nice. Now pay attention to this. Notice there's no change. Volume wide open, no noise blanker, no nothing. And you hear that tone. That's one negative 137. At 100% modulation on the ARP generator. And I have a video which I'll link to this video as an end screen about that ARP generator and the spectral purity and it's calibrated. <clears throat> so, alright, let's take a look at it. Yes, they hear fantastic. And if you're not in a Faraday cage, you may as well hang it up. Getting in here with a screwdriver and trying to adjust it to like some service manual tune, you're best off never to, to remove this cover, okay? Whoever does your radio work, tell them never to remove that. Never. If they don't have the environment and the necessary tools, it might show better on a, like even on the RF generator, but when you go lower, you know, when you got the RF game wide open, noise blanker off, you're going to have all kinds of noise. And the way you tell is you just, well, like this. Dead silent. Wide open volume. And with this tune, even at, say, 113, negative 113 dBm, 100 microvolts. Well, it's not 100 microvolts. I'm, like I said, I'm hungry. I shouldn't even be doing this. Negative 67 is 100 microvolts. But if we go down to, like, 1... 37 that's what you're listening to you can hear it all right yes there's tone not annoying noise so now we're going to come over here turn the modulation down 30 percent and it's going to get loud so everything's sure there Yes, I use an oscilloscope to tune and receive. I don't never use my ears, and I think I've covered this before in other videos. You never want to use your ears for anything. Never. That's just a, an opinion. Calibrated equipment surpasses anybody's ears. Anybody's. Okay, let's go to 67. If they tell you otherwise, <laughs> Uh, just wish him a good day. Let's see where we're at. Now, this meter was never changed. That's where every single one of them, I've done over 1,500 of these, just the 955s alone. Every single one has come out of the box like this. Excluding maybe a hundred of them that have flaws, errors I've had to repair when they were brand new, etc. But when everything's working out of the, you know, ordinarily, then that's exactly where every single one is. So what I'm going to do now is show you what would happen if you were to put an inline attenuator between your radio and your amp. If you did the math to match it, to drop the power of the radio to go into an amplifier. Say we did that and we use this one. This is similar to an inline, but it doesn't affect my receive the way it's attached. 
So what we're gonna do is claim that that's an inline, and it works as an inline, in a way, for transmit. But if we were gonna put it in line between the radio and the amp, this is what would happen. Okay, now I gotta connect this. All right. So if we want to give this like, like another 40, which is negative, which would be 27 for 40. That's where we're going to be at. Oh, I'm at 26. Let's go to 27. Okay. You see how that works? So we'll uh, subtract again, like the attenuator. Now I had to add 40 dB for what this was. There's probably another dB loss or two in everything here. Let's let's recheck it again. We'll go to 26. Yes, yeah, it's, it's flickering. See it? Some of you guys probably saying, "Man, that's one badass bench you got there, hard drive." Yeah, I have a little bit of loss in all these connectors. So the actual power output of my radio is always put out more than you think. So did you get that? So let's put this back down to... ...67. Nothing's changed. Gotta make sure I show that because I don't want to do this video again. Yeah. See that? And this is what it would be like if you took out your attenuator and or if you had a, it's not quite a, like a bunch of switches, nasty pass through on your amplifier, that that would be really, I'd be exaggerating for that, but every time you start adding a couple dB here and there, you're going to lose your receive. See, now we're back. So... Telling people that you could put an attenuator between your radio and your amplifier to tune it. You might be able to transmit, but you're not going to be able to hear nothing. Alright, hope you got something out of this. Clear and gone. Bye, bye, bye.